Hello and welcome to the All American Maker Podcast. My name is Brendan Hobblem, and today my guest is Brandon Farrell, who is the owner and maker of Buffalo Brew Fab in Buffalo, New York. In this episode of All American Maker, Brandon and I will be talking about balancing your home and work life and how we as makers come up with the ideas that we do. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. So I'm here with Brandon Farrell with Buffalo Brew Fab here in Buffalo, New York. And uh, we're just gonna talk a little bit today about uh, what he makes and uh, the maker life and what that means to him. So thanks for being on the podcast. No, thank you, appreciate it. And uh, I guess just give us a little background on how you got into uh, into making stuff and yeah, like, um, what thrust you into that? Yeah, so when I was 18, I graduated high school and my father's like, well, if you're not going to college, you're gonna learn the family skill. And mm-hmm. that was actually you know, metalworking. Um, it's kind of funny because one side of the family is in the beer industry, oh, okay. and the other side's in the metal industry. So it's like almost Perfect like a like, partnership. I put it right <laughs> together. Um, so I was in the metal industry for 10 years for a company, and then I actually moved down to Florida for a couple months and hmm. built brewing tanks. So I sort of learned the get goes of that, and then moved back and um, went back to the same company I worked for, and then, you know. You know, happily ever after, I decided to part ways and took this job and started building it stuff as a you know a hobby, and mm-hmm. it sort of took off from there. From starting with the keg table, from being like 12 gates ruined, being my first big customer, I did a whole tap room. That's awesome. <laughs> um, then pretty much it started off with the Steel Bomb Brewery where they opened up, and I did a lot of the railings, I did the keg urinals, I did the keg sinks, mm-hmm. um, I worked on their brewing tanks. Uh, Signs, fire pits, yeah, wow. they, they keep me busy. Like uh, the guys at Steel Bummer, they, they are a great group of guys over there. They have a great imagination where they like to create these fun, you know, pieces of art, pretty much. And yeah. I'm there to build a farm, you know. So, you know, between them and then I, you know, I, I horse heads brewing. I, you know, did their whole brewery from inside out, and then the kegger and all it's it's all over the U.S., three different countries. Mm-hmm. It's something that has yet to die out, so which is right. huge. So we try to, you know, do a lot of brew decor. We do a lot of home decor. We build giraffe towers. Mm-hmm. Um, we do mobile welding. Um, pretty much, if it's something that you know you have in your mind, you come in here. We sort of spit all ideas and we try to bring it to life out of steel. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it's 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 a fun gig. Do you like like where do you see this going? Because like right now you're working out of a garage, yeah. pretty much. And um, I mean, I'm working on right now um, a draft tower department where mm-hmm. I think it might take this business to the next level. Okay. Um, we're gonna start building custom draft towers. You know, pretty much big arts of work. You yeah. Know, pouring beer. Um, so when it comes to that, we're gonna be doing installing, cleaning. You know, so I think once that take kicks off then I think we'll be scooting out of here into a bigger shop to take on bigger projects because sometimes these draft towers are one to 35 taps you know so those yeah, yeah. will be big you know like I said I did the 25 uh, tap draft tower at steel bond and that thing was monstrous you know so and uh, yeah so once that kicks off you know that, that'll be huge and we might have to expand and we did the axe throwing cage for a hatchet and hops. Oh the yeah. Axe wagon. So nice. we had this thing. We had that in here. So once that was in here, you had no room. Right. You know. So some days there's no room to walk, and it gets pretty, you know, frustrating. But it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's we're looking to expand and you know grow. So, like. If you could share anything with, like, say, future makers or people who want to own their own business, they're creative, but not really sure, like, how to just jump in and do it. Like, do you have any tips or ideas or things uh, that you did? As stupid as it sounds, failure is key. Yeah, you got <laughs> to learn how to fail mm-hmm. because there's, I still fail at a lot of things, and that's just I don't consider it a failure. I consider it a learning curve. You know, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, like I said, I I built my keg journal five different ways. I built my keg table five different ways. You just mm-hmm. try to figure out new ways, quicker ways and more efficient ways to build something where it's gonna be a lot more effective, make it look nicer. Right. And uh, you know, you just 
when you take on a new project, you sort of just you grow with it. Like uh, even when I built patio furniture for a brewery, mm-hmm. like you know, there's a lot of things that I would do differently. You know, you just dive in and just go for it. You know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like. Uh, I know you make a lot of different products and you do custom stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it like having like so many SKUs, so to speak, of like trying to keep track of everything that it you're is, doing? It is very difficult. Um, sometimes it's tough just because like when you, you know, in my perspective, it's tough to lay in bed because right. you're, you're sitting there thinking. It's hard to fall, you know, mm-hmm. fall asleep and just think about new projects. Because when people try to come to you, they have, they don't know what to do or how to do it so they have an idea and then you, like as in for me you just try to think of how to build it and you just gotta sit there and think so not only are you the manufacturer but they're kind of expecting you to be creative and figure out how yeah. to make what's in their mind come to life yeah. and that sometimes you get those customers that not saying that they, they know what they're thinking mm-hmm. but sometimes there's a lot more that goes into a project than just building something sure you know? A lot of people have ideas that you can just do this, but well, you can't do this because this is this is what's going to happen, and mm-hmm. this is going to happen. You got to make sure you do this. You know this. You know, it's you know a lot of learning curves, and sometimes it's tough even holding a job that you actually haven't done yet. You know, just because you know you just don't know what's going to happen. You got to make right. sure that you you know add hours where if something does happen, it you have to make up for it. You know, so you're not losing money. Yeah. So it's 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 up up and down, you know. But it, but it's great when you create something new and someone has an idea. You just want to build it, and mm-hmm. it can become a fun project. It comes become a disaster, you know. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And like, what is it like for you to partner with other, not just like customers, but other makers? I know we talked a little bit earlier about like having all your people, you know. Yeah. No. It's it's actually awesome because like. When you deal with other entrepreneurs trying to, you know, get their products out there, when you collaborate with them, it's it's fun. You, you know, you get different different opinions, different views, um, different ways to actually build something, and right, you know, and that's fun to, and it's fun and easy to have someone that is available that something you know you, you don't have an expertise in, you know. So like, sure. like wood, I don't like to do wood. You know, yeah, like, that's a whole other animal. What's <laughs> what's tough. You know, like I feel like I can, but still I can make a move. I can make it go anywhere I want. You know, when it comes mm-hmm. to wood, I'm like, ooh, I don't want to touch it. So that's why I, I have a bunch of other companies that I deal with that, you know, woodworkers, so which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm guessing that like hooking them up through some of the jobs you're getting helps them too. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and it's even great to actually see your product in the area, you know, like mm-hmm. you go to a local bar and see your sign hanging up there or do a draft tower tap handle and just see it places you know it's it's actually a good feeling like hey i did that you know oh for sure yeah because like a lot of your signs the led signs and they all have wooden backgrounds yep. to them and uh it's like a collective project that yep. comes together and it's pretty awesome yep. yeah um and so like in the future, how do you see your company growing as far as like employees and like people who can help better your company and maybe take on some of the things that aren't your strengths? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I'm definitely you know open to ideas of expansion and bringing people on. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, me, I'm a hands-on guy, so I actually enjoy the fact of being in the back building. Oh yeah, let alone being up front and contacting companies for sales so i mean if there's people out there that's interested in sales and maybe we can work something out but that's definitely the the main thing where you need people out there going to get the work mm-hmm. but as of right now like uh, it's all word of mouth where they're coming to me you know which is that's huge. huge yeah you know like i've yet to do that much promotion besides you know the social media the website but sometimes you just gotta put the legwork in which i haven't had a chance to do it yet which is big. sure yeah because i mean somebody walks into one of these breweries and they see your keg urinal mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, oh hey, I should call him because you never know. Like, reps from different breweries or different mm-hmm. beer distributors might be like, hey, I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, like a lot of my keg urinals, like uh, if I get an order, I'll, it'll, there'll be a lot of female names on the actual order. And huh. Some I'll reach out, like, oh no, it's one of my husband's man cave. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, sometimes it's like you don't know what to get a guy that buys everything for himself. Yeah. 
And if he doesn't know that a keg urinal exists, yeah. it's a pretty sweet gift. And some people, like I had this guy in Mississippi that actually called, and he actually had no idea these even existed. Someone really? like, you know, told him about it, and he was like, no way, and he, you know, called me, and we just chatted for like an hour, and he bought one for me, and, and he was like ecstatic about it, you know. You get two different customers, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, you get a customer that, you know, absolutely loves what you build them, and they're absolutely ecstatic about it, or yeah. you get a customer, go, like, oh, okay, cool, thank you. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I see them every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, which is great, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as they're into your product, and yeah. they're, they're somehow excited enough to buy it yeah because they might not be expressing that yeah but if they're your customer they must really think that your product is good quality yeah definitely yeah. so uh tell us a little bit about the mobile welding that you do yeah so uh, a lot of the mobile welding it, my main customers would be like breweries because mm -hmm. you know they each brewery they have like a they're custom to whatever they brew you know they all have a different you know, ideas and you know, scientific ways to brew their beer. Sure. And then sometimes when you buy a brewing system already completed, you know, sometimes these brewers want to customize them. So or they'll call me, I'll go inside the tanks and put new ports in for them and mm -hmm. take some out, make modifications to them. Okay. It's all a good sanitary welding and, you know, it's, and actually enjoy the fact that I'm mobile because I'll come right to them, do it right on site. Yeah. Um, and I'm, Quick and easy for them, so it makes them, you know, their brew days quicker. So you're not sitting around waiting up for me. But yeah, when it comes to mobile welding, it's just I come to them, whatever they have to have get done, I do it for them, and you know, go from there, which is pretty nice because a lot of brewers, like I said, they get stuck with the systems that they buy, and they just like modify them and whatever makes it easier for them. You know. Are there many people doing the mobile welding? Um, in the area, there's there's. I feel like there's a couple other guys, but like since I'm, you know, my services are dedicated to the brewers, I sure. think, which is huge, you know, because I'm just a phone call, a text, text away from these guys. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you gotta go through the bigger companies to send guys out, where me, I'm just a little guy, so I just, whenever you need me, just give me a buzz. Yeah, and, and I'm guessing you have a bit more expertise related to brewing. And maybe just someone who's like, oh, I'm a welder, yeah. but I do everything. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, like I said, I used to build brewing tanks, so mm -hmm. I know the inside, ins and outs of the brewing tank, you know, what their do's and don'ts. Yeah. And then I actually, with the one company I do work for up here, the, there was food processing equipment too, so that's all sanitary okay. welding. So you just got to make sure you know what you're doing and what you can do, because some people just kind of, you really just can't start popping holes inside of the tank, because there's a lot of yeah. interior stuff that you have to know. <laughs> in these brewing systems. Mm -hmm. And they're not cheap. <laughs> no, they're not. So, yeah, when it comes to that, it's, and you're building these uh, relationships with these brewers, it's, it's huge too, because like I said, mm -hmm. once you're a phone call away, it makes their life a lot more easier. You know? Right, and I'm, and I'm guessing that like, they might call you for that, but then they, later on, the company might be like, hey, those keg urinals are pretty sweet, or those brew tables are awesome, mm -hmm. or, Hey, we have this other project, or we want to start a, uh, a second location. Yep. So, like, business just kind of builds after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, because you got a bit of a relationship. If they trust you, mm -hmm. it's a continuous thing. Yeah, like for me, I make candles, but I also do like promotional films and stuff. And so, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but the companies that I connect with, I either connect with one on or the other. Like, they'll buy candles, or they want the media, mm -hmm. but then it usually leads to the other. Like, uh, so a lot of times that built relationship of, you know, it started, but then they're like, oh yeah, we also, now that we do business with you, we would love to do that too. Yeah. And so building relationships, I think is huge. Oh yeah, it's definitely key. Yeah. Um, and even like once you build a relationship with, with those people, they'll tell like, their friends and, mm -hmm. you know, and like, I don't just don't, I just don't work for the brewers. Like I did a, a, uh, some custom work for a tailor shop and and his friend opened up a tailor shop and called me and then I'll mm -hmm. be he heading there shortly to see what projects he's got in mind because like I said there's a lot of stuff that people want but they don't know where to get it so you gotta build it for them. So. Right. Yeah like even hatchets and hops. I'm sure they're connected with people that have nothing to do oh, with yeah. the brew scene. Yeah. <laughs> so outside of work and everything what's it like balancing your home life and work and, and customers always calling and stuff like that? 
it's it's difficult, you know, like I got a two-year-old at home, a wife, and mm -hmm. one on the way. So, you know, I try to, when I get home, I try to leave my phone in the other room because sometimes it just continually goes off. Yeah. Um, cool, yeah, you got to definitely just try to shut it off because you want to spend quality time with the family. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, once that, once that alarm clock goes off, it's, it's game on um, because, you know, they won't hesitate to call you from morning time to night time and, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I enjoy text messages because they'll just text you all day long and you can at least, you know, get back to that easier than a phone call. Sure. Um, but yeah, you know, but though, you know, you got to understand with being a small business owner that's trying to grow, you have to be there for your customers, mm -hmm. but you have to be there for your family also. Yeah. Um, which my wife, she's a, she actually has her own, she's a physician's assistant and she, okay. she uh, sells health products too on the side too. So she's mm -hmm. in the same thing. Her, her phone's always going off too and she works long days. So it's, as long as you're hungry for the work, you just make time for it. You gotta make time for your family also. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's like a balance that I've been working on. Cause I've been doing what I do full time for about three years and uh, lately it's gotten to the point where I'm always on my phone and I, and I really need to work on like setting those parameters and those boundaries of mm -hmm. like, okay, when I get home, I'm off the phone. Yeah. Because uh, my wife, she definitely appreciates that. Like she wants 110% of my focus versus, yeah. oh, you're on your phone all the time and I'm trying to have a conversation with you. and Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely tough just because you want it so bad. Mm -hmm. And like when you hear your phone going off, you just want to be like, oh, it could be a big sale it could be right you know it could be more money coming in and well but, especially like for you you only gone full-time recently right yeah like that knowledge of oh if I work harder I'll build my business and my family will have a better life mm -hmm. like it's as a man I think it's kind of hardwired into us yeah like and for anybody who's a small business owner you're like Oh, I really want to grow my business because it means a better life for my family. Yeah. And uh, to really be like, okay, like that phone call, well, it'll be there tomorrow. Like, yeah, yeah you should can, understand. You, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's definitely you know, and, and the fact that like you want to grow your business and you actually enjoy what you do mm -hmm. is awesome. Like, you just want to, you know, some days I feel like I'm in and out of this place, and it's just like that. And like, where the hell, where the time go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is great, but you know, some of these, like I said, you just gotta shut it off sometimes. And I've even asked other, you know, business, big business owners, like, how do you do it? Like, he says, oh, and they all say the same thing. You get used to it. You know, it, it dies down. Yeah. You know, you just gotta, you just know how to shut it off. Like, okay, cool. You know? Yeah, and I've also learned, like, as time has gone on, like, in the beginning, I would take every little project that would come my way because I was just like, oh, it means I'm growing my business. But after a while, you kind of get into the groove of like, okay, you've got a whole lot of, maybe it's only like 10 customers that are larger customers. Yeah. And so you're talking to less people, but you're doing the same amount of work. Yeah. And so like over time, it kind of smooths out. Mm -hmm. And so you're doing a lot less communicating and more work, yeah. which also helps. Yeah. Yeah. It was just big. And like I said, like sometimes I, I'm here all day and sometimes I'm not even in the shop all day. I'm either mm -hmm. picking up, delivering, talking to customers, you know, checking up on things and yeah, and your day is gone, you know, and you just want to get back in the shop and start building again, you know. Right. You, know, you, like, you like to see, you know, your products out there and, you know, the actual process of the building and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's fun seeing the products come together. For sure. So. How has the process for producing your products developed over time? Like I know the keg gear, I know you've made a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> like and you like you said you had like five different designs, so to speak, of like progression from where you started to where you are now. Like what's that like to you know, start with it and then get to where you are now where you could almost produce one in an hour or yeah. so. Um, I mean, it goes from just, you just, it's a, it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. You, from the first one to the last one you build, like it's, you know, there's even different ways that I try to, you know, incorporate where it's either saving money mm -hmm. by actual material 
or saving money as in time. Yeah. You know, and then making money just by building a great product, you know. Oh, so for like sure. so from when it comes to the kegger and all from the first one I built it took me days and it's very expensive. So now where it took me, you know, an hour to hour and a half to two hours to actually build one out, you know, and it looks great and people love them. Mm -hmm. And it's just taking that process and just trying to do what you can to speed it up and build a great product for this for your business and for people to love. Yeah, you know, and that goes with anything. I still with the money that the draft towers I built. You know, I was having some minor issues with them, and then like it's one of those things where you just, you know, I do a lot of thinking while I'm like just driving. You know, and then I'm driving and think, 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 and I'm like some guy just click in my head, and I'm like, wow, this is gonna work. You know, I'm like, I'll come in and think of this. You know, <laughs> months ago when I was building these things. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just trying to you know figure different ways to build things and. You know, it's all about, you know, how fast you can do it and how cost effective you can do it and, and still build a great product. Yeah, like what's the process been for you to figure out how to actually, like how much to even charge for something? Um, it, uh, it all varies because obviously you want to be affordable to people, mm -hmm. but you also want to make sure that you're making money. You right. Know? So if obviously you're taking, you know, you're cutting hours on jobs, you know, just by doing it quickly, you're mm -hmm. making money. You don't want to, you don't want to sit on something for days and days and days, and you know, then you're technically losing money. You know, so like, right. so that's why I sort of take pride on my turnaround time because people want the products and they want it fast, and I just make sure before I take on a project, I pretty much I scan through my head and mm -hmm. how am I do. I'm gonna, I legit put a schedule in my head and when I walk in my shop, what I'm gonna do where I'm gonna do it and how it's gonna be done. Right. And I just put my helmet down and start welding and just go, go, go. And sometimes you, 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 uh, you know, you, you, you know, screw up and you have to go take, you know, take take a step back and do repairs on something because you're like, oh man, I, sure. didn't, I didn't do that right. Or sometimes you do rush too fast where you like, so you screw things up, but sometimes it actually just works out that well where like, hey, you know, technically it was supposed to take me you know, three days to build or more, and it took me a day and a half, two days. You know, and like so, that's the best thing. You know, and like when we give customers their turnaround time, and they're even more happier when you're done faster than they expected. You know. Oh yeah, uh, my buddy and I were talking the other day about like the mantra of like uh, under promise and over deliver. Mm -hmm. Like people will always be happy if you deliver before you said you would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I even just had a customer, I'm like, all right, you're all set. She's like, you're done already? I'm like, yeah, it was a small, sometimes I'll put the smaller projects in front of the bigger projects, just because I know I can just whip them out, you mm -hmm. know, and like, it keeps them happy, keeps them coming, you know? Yeah. It's gonna be a small minor thing, but hey, it's a, a quick buck, you know? And right. I know it's just gonna be, take me you know, an hour to do, so besides putting them in the back of the line, I'll just put them in the front, because I know it's just you know, a little time out of my day. Yeah. And it just takes them off my, my you know, project board, which is huge. So, what would you say Buffalo Brew Fab is? So, that's a good question. Uh, what I think Buffalo Brew Fab is, like, we are a business that sort of makes not your dreams come true, but you're, we bring your ideas to life. Mm -hmm. You know, because, like, a lot of the breweries will come to me with an idea of a custom sign, a custom furniture, um, tap handles, mm -hmm. where they want to separate themselves from other bars, breweries or whatever you know so like yeah because it's a huge industry yeah it's huge <laughs> and like they don't want to be the same as the other one they, they mm -hmm. want to be different to get those customers in there so that's where they call me to build them like i said a custom sign you know uh tables and chairs and tap handles mm -hmm. and you know something different like when you go into a brewery you're like wow that's pretty neat you know like or you should go to this place because they have this cool you know keg jenga or you know yeah something <laughs> crazy along those lines because people like to go to these establishments and because it's a different feel it's not that same corporate feel that you get into your chain restaurants and right you know so like a lot of the bars and breweries they they're even the food is like you know amazing you know they're, for sure <laughs> it's like you're you're not just going to you know a brewery anymore just to have beer you're going there for right. a, 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 an amazing meal you know mm -hmm. whether it be a small plate or a big entrees and you know, but they have, they're all about creating something that's different out of this world, different from the other breweries. 
and when it comes to the inner decor, that's what they'll bring me in. Like I said, though, mm -hmm. custom tables, bar stools, tap handles, yeah. signs on the wall, you know, different odds and ends that goes, you know, behind the scene of that bar or brewery. So, and that goes with the same as the home decor, you know, like we'll do projects that the people want in their house, you know, whether mm -hmm. it be custom patio furniture, um, custom monograms in their house, signs in their house, shelving in the house. Yeah. You know, when people have this idea, they want to come to me to, you know, take this idea and bring it to life for them. So mm -hmm. that's what I think Waffle Brew Fab is. And like, yeah, it's almost like people call me an artist, you know. I don't think so, but I guess people do, you know, it's... Well, it's art. Like, it's another, I mean, creativity in all forms is yeah. art, yeah. essentially. So, yeah, it's a good thing. And like, I, as of now, like, we, I have a good team. I. I consider a lot of businesses that I work with are a part of the team because mm -hmm. they we all work together. Yeah. You know, whether it be the artists that I work with here, you know, or other artists that are out there just, you know, doing their own thing. And so it's mm -hmm. it's definitely a it's a great team, it's a great feel. And we try to make both we roof have like a one stop shop. Like if you have a project, you come here and you know, we'll just try to create it for you. Whether I'll be making phone calls for you and you know mm -hmm. I'll I'll do all the work for you. You know, just come here and sit down and chat and just see what, you, see what your plans are and go from there. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, uh, if people want to know more information on Buffalo Brew Fab, like how they can get in contact with you maybe to bring their creative expression to life. Yeah, you can, uh, I mean, the best bet, you can either go to the website, buffbrewfab.com, mm -hmm. Facebook, Buffalo Brew Fab, got the Instagram. Um, you can even give me a call, text message. Um, go from there. Yeah, awesome. And I, I would definitely recommend uh, people contact you because your work is awesome and I'm definitely going to get some stuff. Oh, appreciate <laughs> and, it. And uh, I can definitely see this uh, being in everybody's home. Like anybody who likes beer or anything related yeah. to beer or maybe not beer, yeah. uh, these products definitely speak to you. Yeah. And uh, they. Like whether it's a personalized monogram item or a sign or anything, uh, it brings a space together, yeah, I would say. Definitely, 100%, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Well, thanks for tuning in today. If you'd like to know more about Buffalo Brew Fab and all of the incredible products that Brandon produces, check out buffbrewfab.com or on Instagram, check out at buffalo underscore brew underscore fab. If you would like to support the podcast, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash allamericanmaker and join our sticker or mug club. Also, remember to subscribe and click the bell to get notified on YouTube whenever I post a new video. Thanks and have a great day.